They are now guests aboard my ship. If you return to Garidian space immediately, I will overlook your violation of the neutral zone. Very well. You have won this time, Captain. But I promise you, there will be a next time. The Warbird is heading back toward Garidian space. They are activating their cloaking device. Captain, our new arrivals are requesting to speak with you. Their names are Lucana, Avakar, and Tabak. What are your orders, Captain? I should like to consider the situation a bit further. Mr. Data, any suggestions? I suggest we contact Starfleet, Captain. Counselor, do you have any thoughts? I'm sorry, Captain, but I don't have any suggestions right now. Mr. Worf, your analysis. Captain, we should check our orders from Starfleet. Any suggestions, number one? I'm sorry, Captain, I don't have any suggestions right now. Admiral Williams here. What can I do for you, Captain? What is the current situation, Admiral? Is there anything in particular we should be aware of? Actually, things are relatively quiet right now. The only cause for concern is all the Romulan activity in the area.
I'd like to confirm our current orders. Of course. Starfleet Command is still considering the options. While we review the situation, the Enterprise is to remain on patrol. Got out. Primary core access enabled. Systems online. shields.
Primary Core Access Enabled. Systems Online. Captain Picard, can you help us contact a Vulcan archaeologist named Shaynok? He may possibly hold the key to the discovery of the Lawgiver's Fifth Scroll. What is this fifth scroll you mentioned? Let me give you a bit of background. Caridian society is a rigid structure consisting of two distinct classes, the patricians and the plebeians. You speak of another scroll. According to legend, the lawgiver also wrote a fifth scroll defining the rights and privileges of the plebeian class, which were not explained in the other scrolls. What makes you think Shaynok can help you? My studies indicate that the followers ended up somewhere in what is now Federation space. But because our governments are not on friendly terms, I could never follow up on that research. But the Vulcan scholar Shaynok lives in the Federation and has made extensive studies of our history. I believe he may have vital information that will help us locate the followers.
Why are you so interested in this fifth scroll? I am a scholar, Captain. My interest is purely academic. Lucana, on the other hand, is a social revolutionary. She hopes the scroll will inflame the underclasses to rebellion. How would an ancient scroll do her any good? The patrician stopped the lawgiver before he could reveal his fifth scroll. The lawgiver and a few of his disciples, known as the followers, left Gered in five spaceships to start their own colony. No trace of them was ever found, and the story gradually took on mythic proportions. Who is the Lawgiver? His real name was Avatrunai, and he was the architect of Gudidian society. His four scrolls became the cornerstone of our entire culture. The fifth scroll could be the greatest social discovery in Gerrit's history. Even if you don't agree with Lucana's goals, I urge you to talk to Shaynok and help us find the scroll for science's sake. This could be an intriguing quest. If you'll excuse me, I have other duties to attend to. Perhaps we can talk again later. Captain Picard, my name is Lucana. On behalf of the oppressed underclasses of Gadad, I'd like to thank you for rescuing us. Don't thank me too quickly. You have illegally entered Federation space, and this ship is not a haven for criminals. I am not a criminal, Captain. I am only seeking justice for my people. Very well. You may stay on board the Enterprise until we have sorted this matter out. Do not dismiss me so quickly, Captain. The fate of all Garrett is hanging in the balance. Why do you say that? I am searching for the fifth scroll. It's the only way to give the plebeians the freedom they deserve.
Who are the plebeians? They are the underclasses of Garrett, forced by law to serve the patricians, their masters for the past 1,000 years. Why are you so interested in this fifth scroll? Finding the fifth scroll will free my people from tyranny because the scroll gives the rights to the plebeians, Garrett's lower classes. That's why the government doesn't dare let me succeed. If you'll excuse me, I have other duties to attend to. Perhaps we can talk again later. I feel I should apologize for my mother's actions, Captain. Your mother? Yes. My mother is Pentara, the captain of the Asirum. It was her vessel you confronted when she had my scout ship in her tractor beam. Why is your own mother trying to kill you? She is only doing her duty. I know she doesn't want to kill me, but she is under orders to prevent Lucana from finding the Lawgiver's fifth scroll. Why are you so interested in this fifth scroll? Because I believe in Lucana's crusade. Even though I was born a patrician, Lucana has made me aware of the plebeian suffering. The fifth scroll would give them a more honorable place in Garidian society. I sympathize with your cause, but I must inform you that the Federation will not take sides in Garid's domestic politics. And we are not asking you to do so, Captain. When the time comes, we will fight that battle ourselves. Any suggestions, number one? I'm sorry, Captain, I don't have any suggestions right now.
Captain, we are receiving an emergency transmission from Simcoe 4. Simcoe 4? Isn't there a research center there? Yes, sir. The work at Merton's orbital station focuses on power generation. The researchers there are among the best in the Federation. On screen. This is Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Federation Starship Enterprise. How can we be of help? Captain Picard, I am Dana, Chancellor of Simcoe. We are in need of immediate assistance. Merton's orbital station has been attacked by an unknown vessel and does not answer our hails. Attacked? But the station is a purely scientific facility. Is the attacking vessel still present? We do not know. Whoever or whatever they were, our sensors did not detect them. Perhaps it was a cloaked Romulan vessel. I doubt the Romulans would venture this far into Federation territory. The risks are too great. Captain, you must hurry. The attack has destabilized the station's experimental power core. We don't know how long we have until a core breach, but I can tell you the resulting energy release and radiation would be catastrophic. What about survivors? Did anyone get off the station? We detected several escape pods, but we haven't recovered them yet. The pods we detected could hold only a few dozen. There are hundreds aboard the station, including families. Set course for Simcoe 4. I hope it's not too late. Thank you, Captain. I hope you arrive in time. We'll do our best. Picard out. Dr. Crusher. Crusher here. Doctor, we may shortly be taking on a large number of wounded, possibly hundreds. How much time have I got? Not enough, I'm afraid. Picard out. Miss LaForge? Yes, Captain. We're en route to Merton's orbital station. They've been attacked, and they're going to need immediate assistance. See what you can find out about their experimental power core. I'll see what I can dig up, but the Simconians do some advanced work. It may take a while to figure it all out. Then I suggest you work quickly. Millions of lives on the planet's surface may be at stake. I expect a full analysis of the situation and our options as soon as we're within sensor range. Yes, sir. Engage. arrived at the Simcoe system in response to a distress call regarding Merton's orbital station. The station was apparently attacked by unknown forces, leaving it in danger of a power core bridge. We are within sensor range of the Merton's orbital station, sir. On screen. Miss LaForge? LaForge here. Report, what is the condition of the station? You're looking at what's left of the Merton's Orbital Station, one of the largest research centers in the Federation. The focus of their work is on power generation. Five years ago, they built the prototype of an experimental power core, and it's been running the station ever since. Power generation studies? That doesn't warrant an assault like this. I've been in contact with Starfleet headquarters. Power generation is only part of what this station studies. For several years, researchers here have been working on new ways to detect cloaked vessels. If the Romulans discovered this, they might have risked a raid. 
The Simconians did not detect the attacking ship. It may have been cloaked. That's speculation, Mr. Wolf. We have no proof the Romulans were involved. Well, whoever it was, something powerful punched through the station's shields and sliced off an entire research wing. What do you mean, sliced off? There is insufficient debris in the area to indicate that the missing section was destroyed. It is possible the attackers simply removed it. Jordy, could that be what destabilized the power core? No, and that's what I can't figure out. Damage to the upper deck should only cause minor problems, but I'm reading serious power fluctuations. Maybe serious enough to breach the power core's containment field. What will happen if the containment field fails? I can't say for certain, but with the amount of energy that thing can put out, I wouldn't want to be around it when it goes. Is there any way to shut down the core? There's a fail-safe mechanism which is supposed to jettison the core automatically in an emergency. I'd say this qualifies as an emergency. Why wasn't the core jettisoned? The only way to prevent it is by manual override. Someone has to be there to stop it. That means there's someone still alive in there. Data, are you picking up any life signs? The station's shielding is interfering with our sensors. I cannot tell if any of the crew are still alive. However, life support is still functioning. But power readings indicate that it may fail at any time. Dr. Crusher. Crusher here. We are nearing Merton's station. Are you prepared for casualties? My staff is ready to do double shifts. We can handle about 330 emergency cases, but we'll have to beam the rest down to Simcoe. Understood. Hmm. What is your recommendation? We can't do anything from here, but to get an away team aboard, we have to find a way through those shields. I believe I have a solution. The station's upper shields are badly damaged. If we establish a lock on a transporter on the upper decks, a transporter beam could penetrate the weakened shields. Once we're in, we should be able to jettison the power core. Then we can lower the station's shields and evacuate the wounded. Very well, number one. Make it so. Jordy, I want you and the rest of the away team ready to go in 20 minutes. We'll be there in 10.
Beam down coordinates selected. I've got to talk to the engineers who built this place. The entire hull is lined with a liquid titanium duranium alloy in a memory gel suspension. It's completely self-sealing. You mean the station heals itself? That's one way to put it. The attack caused major structural damage. If this were any other station in the Federation, we'd be standing in a vacuum. I don't think that's such a good idea. It looks like she's still alive, but she's pinned under that cable. All the damage this station suffered, I'm surprised it's still holding together. It looks like she's still alive, but she's pinned under that cable. damage this station suffered, I'm surprised it's still holding together.
getting some life signs, but they're not good. She needs medical attention immediately. Perhaps we could cut through the cable with a phaser. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. These data lines are pretty volatile. It could vaporize. The heat from the blast would almost certainly kill her. I don't like it. But a phaser may be the only way to get to her. We'll try a low power burst, level 3. That should cut through the cable without vaporizing it. risk firing any closer to her. capacity data transfer cable, probably a main communications line. Readings show damage characteristic of a phased plasma beam. This cable's built for handling information, not energy. I'm surprised it didn't just vaporize when it was hit. show massive fluctuations in the power level. Can't imagine what could cause something like this. There's a tremendous drain, then it cuts off suddenly and even reverses slightly, almost as if something were breathing the energy. Severe power oscillations put a lot of stress on the containment field. If the field breaches, this station's had it. I've been thinking about how to free that trapped crewman. What if we use the station's transporter to remove the cable? I've already got the coordinates we need.
care of the worst of her injuries. She's coming around now. signs are strong. She should recover fully. You're from Starfleet, aren't you? Yes, we're from the Enterprise. We just arrived. Thank goodness you're here. I'm Anna Bennett, Chief Medical Officer. Listen, we've got a lot of wounded here. How many can you evacuate? We can get everyone, but not until we lower the shield. We can't do that until we stabilize or jettison the power core. I don't know who or what it was. I was headed for sick bay when something struck the hull and tore this cable loose. Do you have any guesses who might have done this? Was there any warning? We never knew what hit us. There was an initial attack which lasted maybe 10 minutes. Later there was a hull breach and the power systems went crazy. I don't remember anything after that. I passed out. said the power systems went crazy. It's this insane experiment Dr. Greems and some of the other researchers put in place. A revolutionary power source. It's unstable enough to begin with. After sustaining damage like this, who knows what it'll do. We've been reading some large power fluctuations. Is that normal? How should I know? Those maniacs. You know what they've got down there? They plug the biggest research station in the quadrant into a singularity, a black hole. Then why the energy fluctuations? Singularity-driven power sources are usually stable. Greems came up with some scheme to increase the energy output. Something about gravity waves. I don't know all the details, but it involved destabilizing the containment field.
Where are the rest of the station personnel? Most of them probably escaped when Commander Wilde gave the order to evacuate after the first attack. But I know many are trapped and can't reach the shuttle bays. We'll be back to check on you later. Right now, we've got to stop the core breach if we can. All right. I think I'll be fine for now. I'd say we found our intruder. These readings make no sense. Whatever that thing may be, it's obviously not what these readings say it is. It's sending false readings to our tricorders. It's like a chameleon. It disguises itself perfectly. If we weren't here to see it, we'd never know it was here. It could probably fool our ship sensors just as easily. 
This chameleon field seems to take a fraction of a second to adjust to new scanning frequencies. If I set the tricorder to randomly shift frequencies at high speed... There. I'm getting a partial reading now. Yep, it's a neutronium hull, all right, and a powerful energy source. I've never seen that much power in such a small package before. Commander, I'm reading some serious power fluctuations in the life support systems. How serious? Well, we could lose life support at any time. We've got to find a stable power source, and soon. If life support fails, we won't have much time to stabilize the station. Agreed. Life support has to take priority. Let's get to the control room and see if we can switch life support over to emergency power.
It's not working. to get past that machine out there. It's blocking the way to primary engineering. Ideas. We do not have sufficient weaponry to destroy the intruder. What is it doing here? It appeared to be drawing plasma from the third conduit cluster. Well, that's it. It's collecting energy. Maybe if we can temporarily shut off the power, it'll leave. Make it think the wells run dry, eh? It's worth a try. There should be emergency shutoff controls around here somewhere. This auxiliary panel seems to control power flow. Russia to Enterprise, report. We have detected a small object departing the station at height. That can't be right. Apparently this object is capable of sending false readings to our sensors. It has a chameleon field which sends false readings to sensors and tricorders. Interesting. The object has accelerated to warp speed.
it is. We can't afford to pursue. There are too many lives at stake down here. Acknowledged. Picard out. can't redirect life support power without the access code. Maybe Dr. Bennett knows it. There's an alien looking machine down in the engineering level attached to one of the conduits. Have you seen it? I don't know what you're talking about. There shouldn't be anything down there but conduits and control panels. I'd bet anything that's what caused the second impact and breached the hull. Sure got the weapons for it. Your guess is as good as mine, but I can tell you for certain that it didn't belong here. some help. What is it? We need the access code to put life support on emergency power. But that should happen automatically. Only if the main power has been interrupted. The core is still providing power. Hmm, so the emergency system never kicked in. But if there's main power, why shift to emergency power? Fluctuations in main power are getting worse. A big enough surge could overload the life support system. I warned them about using an inherently unstable power source. I never thought it would come to this. The code is 334L42. Thank you. We'll stabilize life support. Then we'll see about that power core. You should jettison that thing. If it breaches the containment field, life support will be the least of our problems.
be back to check on you. All right. I think I'll be fine for now. You have an uncanny sense of timing. I beg your pardon? Timing, I said. You have fine timing. The one instant I cannot afford to be distracted, and in barges all of Starfleet. I'm Jordi LaForge, Chief Engineer of the Enterprise. We're here to help. Thanks for the offer, but I haven't time to instruct Starfleet in the intricacies of singularity-driven power generation, so kindly stop distracting me! Dr. Greems, I'm chief engineer on a galaxy-class starship. It's my job to work miracles. Have you seen a system like this before? I'm not sure. It looks like some kind of gravity wave power source. But how can you generate gravity waves of this magnitude? A little something I got from the Romulans. We've got an artificial singularity bottled up down there. And by varying the strength of the containment field, I was able to increase the magnitude of the gravity waves. But now that something's got the energy flow out of phase with the containment field, ooh, we've got to get the energy flow back in phase immediately. Not bad for a Starfleet officer. Hmm. You may be of some use after all. You see, the only reason the field's held up this long is because I've been here manually compensating for the fluctuations.
Sounds like you could use an extra pair of hands. Listen, I'll handle the conduit. You maintain the containment field. I'll keep the containment field up as long as I can. I see you already have a phase inverter and a wave reduction converter. Good. You'll need them. A phase inverter? But that'll just make the fluctuations reverse. Unless... Ah, if we use the wave reduction converter to dampen them, the reversal will actually work in our favor. Smarter than you look. Install the phase inverter coupling in the damaged area. Then use the wave reduction converter to bring the fluctuations down. If I can keep the containment field up, we should make it. I'm on my way. Enterprise. The guard here. We've stabilized the power core. The outer shield should be lowered now. Confirmed. We'll start evacuating the wounded immediately. Great. That means we're done here. Beam us up. Acknowledged. We are being hailed, sir. It is Chancellor Danab. On screen. Captain Picard, you have my warmest thanks. We had really given up hope. We are pleased to have been able to help. Have you recovered all the pods yet? My staff tells me all the evacuees are safe and sound. And my compliments to your medical staff. Our surgeons were quite impressed with Dr. Crusher's handiwork. I'll pass that along. The last of the injured personnel should be beamed down within the hour. I think we can handle it from here. By the way, Dr. Greems personally extends his gratitude. He felt he owed you and your crew an apology. Tell him we accept his apology. Picard out. What are your orders, Captain? Set course for the Ruinor sector and resume our patrol along the neutral zone. Yes, sir. Engage.
Mr. Data, give me a scan of this sector. Scanning? Sensors report no unusual activity, sir. All spatial parameters appear to be normal. What are your orders, Captain? I should like to consider the situation a bit further. I have decided to visit Shaynok and see whether he can help you regarding the Fifth Scroll. Thank you for agreeing to visit Shaynok, Captain. The Fifth Scroll could be the greatest social discovery in Garrett's history. Understood. We will be underway at once. I will let you know when we arrive. Mr. Worf, inform Starfleet that we will be assisting the Garidians in their search. Aye, sir. Computer, what are the current whereabouts of the Vulcan archaeologist, Shaynok? According to Federation archaeological survey records, Shaynok is currently excavating ruins on the planet Horst 3. Set course for Horst 3, warp 5. Aye, sir. Engage. Admiral Williams here. What can I do for you, Captain? What's your assessment of our recent performance? The Enterprise responded to a distress call from Merton Station. Good work there, Picard. Without your efforts, this could have been a real catastrophe. 
You saved hundreds of lives, kept the station operational, and even managed to save the experimental power core. Congratulations. Shall I go on? Please do. The Enterprise's presence in this region has set a lot of minds at ease, but I'm still concerned about the Romulan activity in the area. Look sharp, Captain. Got out. Mr. Data, any suggestions? I suggest we contact Starfleet, Captain. Counselor, do you have any thoughts? I'm sorry, Captain, but I don't have any suggestions right now. Standard orbit. Greetings, Shaynok. I'm Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Captain, how may I assist you? What brings an archaeologist of your stature to such a remote planet? I am excavating the ruins of a Chodak outpost. The Federation Archaeological Survey is sponsoring my work. Who are the Chodak? An ancient race. At their peak, the Chodak occupied most of what is now the Romulan Empire. But I thought all known Chodak ruins were on the other side of the neutral zone. This is the first Chodak site found in Federation space. It was my good fortune to discover it.
What have you found so far? A great deal, actually. I have uncovered evidence of an extensive administrative system, as well as examples of Chodak computer technology quite similar to our own isolinear rods. Intriguing. Such devices would be among the oldest known examples of isolinear technology in the galaxy. I hope to confirm that fact. I sent several rods to the Merton's orbital station for testing. They've developed a gravitic stress dating method which is extremely accurate. However, I have not yet received their results. I'm afraid we have got some bad news for you, Shaynok. Merton's station has been attacked. It was almost completely destroyed. Indeed. That is a great loss. Shaynok, we have several Garidian refugees aboard who are trying to find something called the Fifth Scroll. They said you might be able to help. Possibly. I once did extensive research on the Lawgiver and the Followers. They fled into what is now Federation space a thousand years ago, bearing the Fifth Scroll with them. We've heard of them. So where did these Followers go? I never found the Followers colony. But your friends should not lose hope. In my search, I stumbled on one of the Followers ancient ships. The logs indicated that they had found an M-class planet suitable for colonization. I'd be most eager to examine the site myself. I can beam down immediately. Captain, I'm aware of your reputation as an archaeologist, but I cannot permit any visitors. The excavation is far too delicate. My apologies. Thank you for your help, Shaynok. Good luck. And to you, Captain. Live long and prosper. What are your orders, Captain? I should like to consider the situation a bit further. Chancellor, the Vulcan archaeologist Shaynok sent some artifacts to Merton Station to be tested. Can you give us any information about this? I'm sorry. Shaynok's artifacts were in the destroyed section of the station, as were many other relics we were analyzing. Thank you again for your efforts, but I'm afraid we're rather busy. There's much work to do to recover from this disaster.
Captain, message from Starfleet. It is Admiral Redrick. On screen. Greetings, Admiral. What can we do for you? Jean-Luc, good to see you again. I have a little favor to ask. Would you be interested in finding a little lost lamb for me? of speech. I have a friend stationed on Morassia, an exobiologist. I haven't heard from her in quite a while. I'm getting a little worried. I'd like you to check into it if you can. Morassia? Isn't that some sort of zoological habitat? Oh, it's much more than that, Jean-Luc. The Morassians have created three distinct biotopes, three completely different ecologies in one section of their planet. They call it the Preserve, the latest wonder of the galaxy. Who exactly is this lost lamb? Her name is Dr. V. Hunforsch. She was on Morassia cataloging local species for the Federation Zoological Database but no one's seen her for days. Have the local authorities investigated the matter? Constable Lixie, who runs the preserve, thinks V went on a field trip and that there's nothing to worry about. To humor me, she said I should send a team to investigate. Admiral, do you have any reason to suspect foul play? Uh, the truth? V is headstrong. She might be chasing butterflies. But I think there's more to it than that. And Jean-Luc. Marassia is applying for Federation membership. You could review the state of affairs there while you're looking for our exobiologist. Very well. As soon as we receive your report, we'll get on the way. I'll transmit it immediately. Oh, and Jean-Luc, the Morassians have a strict matriarchal society. Males are usually treated as servants at best. Don't take it personally. Understood, sir. Good luck. Redrick out. Lay in a course for Morassia, warp 5. Yes, sir. Engage. Primary core access enabled. Systems online.
Mr. Wolf, your analysis. Captain, we should check our orders from Starfleet. Warning, entering Nebula. Entering non-aligned space. Standard orbit. Captain's log supplemental. The Enterprise has arrived at Marassia to investigate the disappearance of Dr. V. Humforsch, an exobiologist stationed here for the past two years. The three species native to this world have enjoyed a millennium of peaceful cooperation and this visit will give us the opportunity to review Marassia's petition for membership in the Federation. It's time we introduced ourselves. Mr. Worf, Hail Constable Lixie. Aye, Captain. I'm Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Federation Starship Enterprise. We have come to investigate the disappearance of Dr. Hunforsch. Welcome to Morassia. As I told Admiral Redrick, I really don't think Dr. Hunforsch is in any danger. She's probably on an extended field trip. Good. We'll need your beam down coordinates. I shall transmit them. And Captain, in order to protect the animals in the preserve, we permit no weapons of any kind on the surface. Our away teams carry phasers for self-defense only. They can be locked on a low stun setting. I assure you none of your animals will be harmed. I'm sorry, Captain. I won't allow it. We cannot predict how even your lowest setting will affect our animals. We will respect your laws. The away team will not be armed. For a male, you are unusually cooperative. Is there any better way to begin a relationship? Forgive me, Captain. I am not accustomed to seeing a male in command. I will await your investigators. down coordinates selected. Visitors for Constable Lixie. Constable Lixie is present. I 
I'm Lieutenant Commander Data of the Starship Enterprise. I'm investigating the absence of Dr. Hoon Forsh. Welcome. So you are the artificial human. Interesting. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but there really is no need for alarm. Dr. Hunforsch is probably just on an extended field trip 